In this video, you are going to discover how to introduce HTML elements to the scene, like these labels on top of the checkpoints in the car. The idea behind this feature is to create sort of a layer or a container on top of the scene, then create and transform HTML elements into 3D objects and place them in that container. So, this is a project I created in a previous tutorial, I'll leave you the link to it in the description below, in case you want to follow along. The first thing we are going to do is import the CSS 2D renderer, create an instance of it and then set its size. Next, we are going to use some CSS properties which are the position and top to put the container of the rendered elements on top of the scene. The next step we are going to do is to append it to the DOM. That done, we are going to call render within the animate function and reset the size again for when the window gets resized. Now, if we take a look at the DOM tree, you'll see that we got a new div, which is basically the container we've just created. One last thing in this section is that controls actions such as the orbit control span won't work since the mouse click won't be captured on top of the scene, but on top of the newly added div instead. Actually, let's give it a try. So, as I said, things don't work as expected. To solve that problem, we'll simply prevent the container from capturing mouse events using this line. And there we go, problem solved. In this section, we are going to do the second phase, which is the creation of the HTML elements and their transformation into 3D objects. So first, we are going to import the CSS 2D object class. Next, we are going to create a paragraph, for example. Then, to turn this element into a 3D object, we are going to create an instance of the CSS 2D object class and pass that element as an argument to the constructor. Now, same as any 3D object, we can add it to the scene, position it, rotate it, etc. And there we go. By the way, notice that the element keeps facing the camera no matter what direction the camera is looking at. And again, there is a problem. So since the CSS 2D renderer uses CSS transforms to position the elements behind the scene, using them to apply some effects your labels won't work. So let's try that. As you see, no matter what value we pass to the translation, the paragraph sticks to the initial position. To fix that, we just simply need to wrap the paragraph inside the container element, like a div for example. Then transform the div into a CSS 2D object instead of the paragraph. And now the transform works. Now, time to put what we've learned into practice. The first thing we are going to do is make a function that we'll use to create a set of spheres to represent the checkpoints.
Now we'll create a group which will hold all of our checkpoints. The next thing we are going to do is create a paragraph, set a class to it, wrap it in a div and create a CSS2D object out of it. Next, we are going to prepare the Raycaster. Then we'll use a switch case to reset the class and the text content of the paragraph. Hence, if a checkpoint is being hovered on, the tooltip will be shown using the show class that we are going to code in just a second. And now that we have the text of the tooltip appearing on top of every checkpoint, let's do some CSS to add a fade in and fade out effects. So we'll start with the creation of a CSS file. Then we'll set the font for the text, some padding, height and width for the tooltip. Next, we'll add the triangular part at the mid bottom of the tooltip using the after selector. And finally, we'll create the show and hide classes, which are going to be added and removed depending on the checkpoints, if they are hovered on or not. Lastly, we are going to add a label on top of the car to indicate its speed. So, we'll start with the creation of a paragraph, create a CSS2D object instance, 
then position and add it to the car model. Next, in the animate function, we'll update the paragraph's text content with the current speed using the getSpeed method. As you can see, we have many unnecessary digits, so what we are going to do is simply call to fix it in order to round the number to just two decimals. And this is it for this video, so make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.